Cheers, you magnificent bastards. We're gonna do high proof scotch. Whew. Now you enjoy the scotch. Oh yeah, I do. It's almost like somebody read my diary. Dear diary, I wanna drink so hard at work today. Yes, <laughs> all scotch and all of my favorite brands. So we asked a community of whiskey lovers, what are your favorite high proof scotches? Talking cash drink stuff that's like, you know, well out of the 40% ABV and they delivered. How, we're gonna go through like seven or eight? What are we we're gonna go through eight, but we're missing one. So we'll drink seven, the okay. list is eight. Okay, okay, okay. So Number eight on the list. Sure. Wait, we have Brianna on the camera. Today. Hi, hi, Brianna. Hi, hi. Actually, hi Brianna. Eight, we're gonna eight. start with number eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, every time you hear about Lagavulin, it's usually within the context of the Lagavulin 16. Yes, yeah, that's the classic. Okay. But they started releasing the 12 cask strength. This one is for their 200th anniversary of Lagavulin. Okay, and the proof on it? There are other versions of this out there now. The proof is 50, well, alcohol is 57.7%. Okay. That's some hot stuff. Yeah, so this is Isla Scotch. Isla as a category, you're gonna have a lot of big, bold mm -hmm. flavors. It's kind of an acquired taste. If you love it, you love it, and if you don't, then and yeah, good luck. Now, typically when you go into the Lager 116, you immediately get this like old, light, antique smoke. That's yeah. just sort of a, a soft touch, but it's very present. Yeah, right? there's, there's like a, a salt air and a mint quality to like, that nose. This one is a little sharper. Uh-huh, well. So if you're used to the 16, this one has a little bit more brightness to it. Like the lights got turned up a mm -hmm. little. Also, I think there's more ashiness mm -hmm. than what I remember in the 16. So immediately, the first second, it's more of that immediate right fruity sweetness that I remember on the typical 16. Really dense, densely yeah. sweet, but then as soon as it subsides slightly, mm -hmm. whew, ash and smoke. Yeah, that, that brininess comes oh, through yeah. a lot more. Yeah, what do we got here, what do you got? I'm gonna give you some, uh, the container we can use to add water. I did. There you go. Like I do wanna add water to each of these because they change. One of the beauty, uh, the beautiful things about getting a cask strength bottle yeah, yeah, yeah. is you get to try it at all these layers. Yeah. Oh, immediately, really sharp smoke, mm. burnt toasted bread. And again, it doubled down on that first thing that was unexpected for me. The sweetness mm -hmm. just kind of exploded right at the very beginning. It's almost sugary in this. This is almost over toasted bread to where it becomes slightly blackened yeah. on the edges with a really thick layer of jam. Really quick, for those that are unfamiliar, why did we just add water to this? It's called opening up a whiskey or flouring a whiskey. There's various terms, but essentially what you're doing is you're sort of breaking up that aged solution that's in this bottle and that's sort of rested. Certain things in this mixture, in this bottle, even if it's been proved, mm -hmm. are water soluble and certain things aren't. When you add a little water, yeah. you create this moment where the non-soluble water things push to the surface, mm -hmm. and so you get this like oily layer on the top. Yeah. If you just do a few drops, that's it gets way yeah. more aggressive really fast. Yeah. If you add a lot of water, and that flushes all of that out and it, it just waters it down. I did find like a candied walnut mm -hmm. in the mix of all of these layers in a beautiful whiskey. Love that. Man, I'm so glad that made the, the list there. I totally agree. You, uh, dump glass? Are you taking? Drink it or dump glass? How dare you? Who knew that was the line? You're gonna go in and yeah, rinse your glass. Number seven on the list, which is one of my all-time favorite whiskeys, mm -hmm. specifically this bottling, 12-year-old yes. Springbank yes. cask strength. Okay. This is a two and a half times distilled. How do you have to distill something? Because you take some of the faints of one of the double distillations mm -hmm. and put it back into one of the other spirit runs. Yeah, and real quick, what is a faint? A faint is when you make the heart cuts, mm -hmm. the leavings. I have this idea in my head of what Springbank is. Mm -hmm. It's lively. Mm -hmm. But coming off the heels of that cask Lagavulin. Well, here's the thing though. I put my nose in that. Yeah. And this is so much more sweeter and soft than I remember here's compared, the to, compared to the Lagavulin. If you start with this, this is just like it slaps you in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But remember that this is sherry cask. Mm -hmm. All sherry cask. Yeah, yeah. That's right? the fruity, yeah. And so you're getting that really dark fruit mixed yep. with a slight band aid mm -hmm. note. It's like uh, dried fruits and mixed nuts. A band aid? Yeah. Look for that iodine. Oh, oh it's beautiful. It is so. So, so compared to fruits, yes, compared to this becomes less. Briny, smoky, intense, mossy, and more in the sweet area. Yeah. yeah. This is just a beautifully rich Come on, man. sherry cask. Cherry cordial and caramel. Mm hmm. Damn, though. All right, try that, because okay. this one really comes to life. Mm hmm. Mm. You, know, you know what? On the palate. Well, it cranked up <clears throat> a sweetness mm -hmm. that is kind of like weirdly 
a Sprite note, like the soda. Oh, effervescent. Yeah, and then everything else that I was liking that felt more naturally flavored, Yeah. that for me kind of fell by the wayside. It did get a lot more lively, but I think I liked it without the water. Hey, you haven't been in the last uh, couple of videos that much. Where have you been? Well, traveling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to Louisville, Kentucky to hang out with the Moonshine University guys. Yeah, yeah. And it's f***ing amazing. Cool. We are now moving to... Ardbeg Cory Vrekin. I this one this. replaced like a core release of theirs. Yeah, and I remember it being lovely on the nose. What was the 57.1% ABV? It's not my favorite favorite. No, Ardbeg. no, but your favorite does show up on the list. Dude, I was... Have no fear. Hold on, I was foreshadowing. Oh. That's not how I foreshadowed. I <laughs> Is that the past tense of foreshadowing? I foreshat. That's Shat the verb version. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Okay. That guy's foreshadowing. <laughs> One of the more punchy art bags for me. Okay. It's a. It's named after a whirlpool. Yeah. By the distillery mm -hmm. in the area. It really has this aggressive, mm -hmm. uh, riotous almost nose to it to me. Comparative tastings, AB comparisons are so much of experiencing whiskey. Right. And what we just had. This nose isn't tossing me around the room and treating me naughty. Not not as much. Mm. It's almost like a stewed pear. I was gonna say honeyed pears. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Huh. That's the next thing you're thinking. One, two, three, brines. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah, they're also they're salty. <laughs> <laughs> I've been uh, told. I've been told. <laughs> salt water, brine, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That yeah. kind of mossy note. That uh, there's a darkness to this one. Mm -hmm. That, that wasn't on Lagavulin in 12. It is surprisingly well balanced. What is it like on the taste? Same. Okay. This yeah. is the most consistent nose to palate that we've had so far, mm -hmm. where all the same notes show up in the palate. Oh, damn though. Right? That is a more dense, sweet, malty note mm -hmm. than I think we've had so far. Oh yeah, yeah. I think uh, the casks that they chose really left a lot of room yeah. for the grain to show up. And make a little almond. It's a little younger, I feel like. Yeah. They yeah. don't give an age statement for this, yeah. but I feel like you can tell the malt is forward. Right. Add a little water. It carved a hole out of the mid palate. Yeah. And it left it a little bitter, and that nice honey sweetness sort of dropped out. I think I like it better, because it was nicely balanced, but it woke up the flavors and made them a little bit more agitated. Mm -hmm. But they were already starting from kind of a balanced place. Yeah. It's just the agitation kind of turned up the volume in a, in a richer, nicey, more effervescent way. I feel like, I like the it. EQ and the mid palate just dropped to halfway. Okay. Oh, I love Highland that. Park Highland, cask strength. Highland Park's great. Yeah. Now we were lucky. I, yeah, we both really like Highland Park. Great. Uh, this is batch one, mm -hmm. in case you're taking notes. Mm -hmm. So this is American oak seasoned with sherry. Uh, how do you season something? Well, you add sherry to it. Instead of taking sh casks that have been aging sherry for 20 years mm -hmm. and then putting whiskey in it, yeah. they take an, a barrel that never had sherry in it, yeah. put some sherry Kinda in there. Kind of like a sherry rinse. Yeah. On the nose of this, there's such a beautiful, rich, saturated vanilla cream note. Yeah, I can see what you mean by that. Yeah. There's a density to the sweetness that's almost uh, caramel candy. You get the caramel mixed in there, it's like kind of that more voluptuous like sweetness. Like those Werther's Originals in there. Yeah, you got some Werther's in here. Because Dan is... The secretary. Not, not quite as much of an old man as you, mm -hmm. but he has lean meat. <laughs> <laughs> Look. What is going on over there? It's like, don't worry about what it. What do you got going on here? Hey, you do your job and I'll do mine. Like, uh, <laughs> Did you just tell me to stay in my lane? Is that what happened? In your lane. <laughs> one Dan per half. <laughs> okay, All right. going in. I love that. That like sulfury oh. burnt peated note yeah. really wraps around the outside edge of that really dense, sweet, fruity yes, middle. Yes, the, the dense, Rich, dark fruits. Mm -hmm. Just so, just saturating. I added a little water to yours. You keep sneaking the water. I know. I'm gonna start sneaking things and your glass. Yeah. Nah. That's illegal. Nah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Alex got slipped a, a roofie and then got on a plane and got very lost when he got to the airport. <laughs> what? Yeah. Right? It's not a roofie. You were sli unknowingly slipped something in your drink and then had the best time. Yeah, I did get high. <laughs> Oh, it got a little more bitey, a little more peppery. Oh, and the lingering taste is a little more of that pepper. Mm -hmm. Zest. A little bit more of a, a tanginess. Mm. I think that this is the most accessible, best representation of Highland Park for my money, other than the classic 12. Okay. Right, Sailors, uh, words. 
probably should have done this before the cast <laughs> drink the whiskey. Bright Cellars exists to help you discover the new wines that you love. Mm. There is a seven question quiz to go through and it's gonna help you determine where your preferences lie. Oh, it's like a matchmaker. Yeah, so yeah. here's the thing, we got white because you're just making this about me. So this is Pinot Grigio from California. Yes. Tetra Chroma. Well Fleet Chardonnay 2019. Margarita Vineyard Paso Robles. I think I'm, oh, oh, can we trade? I used to live right next to Paso oh, okay, Robles. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Sure. So we got this after I went through kind of dialing in the preferences, got a box of six wines mm. and they sent, look at all the wine, Chardonnay or <laughs> Each box that they ship out to people is unique. It's based on your preferences. It's not, what do we have this month? Send it to everybody. It is based on what you think is gonna be interesting and nice for you. So you filled it out for me. Well, I've actually visited this vineyard see, before. I mean, you've been you've been like traveling a lot, so I'm just doing Ooh. you doing you a solid. And I knew you had that connection to Paso Robles, so I got Robles, you, Robles, Paso Robles. That too. Robles. I got you that though. If you were a wine guy, you would know this. Thanks to Bryce Sellers, I am a wine guy. Oh God, you bastard! Oh, that's my favorite. A, a toasted vanilla. This yeah. is a little more desserty. This is a little more hefty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all about whiskey exploration, but in terms of wine exploration, this is kind of where it's at. With this seven part quiz that they take you through, you can get stuff that's most likely going to be perfect for your palate. I can't believe that you were able to get your hands on effectively like a small town vineyard from Paso Robles. Yeah, it's all about the exploration. They're going to send you cool stuff. It's, it's a super affordable box for you to explore stuff, but what's the offer though? Yeah, you get 50% off your first box of six. Hey, it's, the Paso Robles. It's it's not Paso Robles. It's, no, but it's Paso Robles. Don't leave me Robles. hanging. Don't let me. Don't, don't, Paso Robles. That's not Robles. fancy sounding at all. Paso. Raise the glass. Robles. That's fancier. Robles. Robles. Who cares? If so next up, this is number four on the list. Mm -hmm. Ugdal. I love the Ugdal. The Ugdal. 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 This yeah. was a resounding success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was one of those whiskeys that got made, released, mm -hmm. and all of the most fanatic Ardbeg fans yeah, yeah, yeah. said. Yeah. Notice more mossy but less smoky. And because it's relevant, 54.2% ABV. Yeah. If there's such a thing as a sweet mossy, mm -hmm. once again, I'm getting a caramel vanilla vibe. I was very glad to find out that the, the ooked up, it's not the standard Ardbeg 10, right. which is the most common, but it's not impossible to get your hands on. Oh, it's so soft. Come this come is on. the first one of all of them that just drinks like a slightly mm. mossy, mm -hmm. salted mm -hmm. buttercream. Yeah, salted butt. Yeah, buttercream. Also, they get the caramel in there too. Mm -hmm. um, is it just me, or are there more cash strength releases in American whiskey? Yeah. Less common in Scotch. It, well, not anymore. Those higher proof things are starting to hit the shelf in Scottish whiskey and Irish, actually. Oh, the toffee note in here. Beautiful toffee oh, yeah. note. Yeah. Oh, I added water to yours. Oh, maybe that showed up after the water. Yeah, okay. I think it did. We're very sneaky. Oh, we keep it's not it near over. as good with water on the palate. It disrupts the balancing act. Yeah. It makes it less beautifully rich and sweet and voluptuous and yep. more just kind of lively and pokey. So number three on the list was Octomore. Okay. We're gonna drink the youngest Octomore that I have okay. in the vault. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's barely legal, it's three years old. It's you too, I don't think we can say barely legal. Yeah, probably not. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> and it's- <laughs> Brian is trying to keep it together. <laughs> It's actually using new oak, yeah. like American whiskey. Well, hold on a second. This is virgin, virgin oak. oak. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. And look how dark that is in three years old, mm -hmm. and it's toasted, not charred. Mm. So they took limousine French oak barrels, they yeah. heavily toasted, mm -hmm. and then they filled them. And then at three years, and in a low peat, 88 ppm. Yeah. It's a lower peat than most of the other Octomars you've had. Okay, because. But it's new oak. Oh, well, yeah, that is much less of that peat. A lot of really strong toasted wood notes, like yeah. toasted bread. It's very oaky. Right? I mean, there, there are recognizable, because it's the virgin oak, right? It's American oak. The bourbon notes, I'm getting like a vanilla. I'm getting the oakiness, obviously. This There's a little is bit of, a little bit of an apple twinge in there. Very grain forward, too. Yeah. Like the malt is strong and just wrapped in toasted tannins. Mm. Ah, there's that new oak bite. It's got a different bite than peat completely. And it has a nutty finish. Yeah. There's a nut finish. That's good, right? A nut finish, though. This should prove to everyone yeah. that age statement scotch mm -hmm. does not necessarily equal good. One of the things that's doing a lot of the heavy lifting in this, though, is the, the virgin oak. Oh, yeah. The unused Absolutely. oak. I think if this was a used barrel, it probably would be well, tasting a lot younger than what this for is. For one, it would look like pale straw color. Yes. So that's the other thing that people don't realize is a lot of the reason you need older scotch to get rid of the grain malt note mm -hmm. is because the used oak takes that much 
much time to have an impact. Right. This, to me, I didn't think it would play nicely with each other, but a lot of those classic American bourbon notes mm -hmm. combined with that Octomore, earthy, there's a little bit of salt in there. Those actually show up in the glass beautifully. I, I didn't think they would I didn't think they'd be compatible, but they're really nice. Very well balanced yeah. for such a young whiskey. Mm. Look, number two is Lafroy cask strength 10. It's, hey. it's not in the vault anymore. We don't even have, we had two. I can't even find the backup bottle. But what we do have, we have been doing the Crowder Barrel coffee. Oh yeah. Right? We did a Lafroy barrel rested coffee from yes. Las Nubes, Nicaragua. So we're gonna put the link in the description down below. Uh, we have a Crowder Barrel coffee line where we're putting coffee beans in various whiskey barrels from all over the world, from and this scotch is, to, we've done Willet, we've done uh, even our own Eleanor. Yeah, yeah. Done, yeah. This is not like basically flavoring coffee beans with whiskey. No, no, no. Because I do not like that. Right. These are ones where it's it's been a subtle touch. Yeah. yeah. Basically right. it's pulling out the whiskey and it's living in there and it's not an artificial flavoring, it's beautiful stuff. So you should yeah. try it, link in the description down below. But what do we have in place of the Lefroy, or are you blowing past it We're because- We're blowing past it and going to number one. Because number one is one of my all time favorite cask oh, strength yeah, yeah. What do we got? scotches. Oh, it's a Abelor Avenal. Oh yes, okay. I hear the words Abelor. It translates. I think, I think two things. I think dark fruits, and I think just thick chode of a neck on that. Yeah, Look right? at that That's bad Abelor. Boy. You kid? You kidding me right mm -hmm. now? You kidding me with that chode? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> this is the most densely sherry <laughs> cask. Maintain the camera, Sorry. Brianna. You yeah, can't you laugh. Have, you, you have can't one laugh. Job. If you thought that the uh, the density of the last cherry cask was hefty, it has got nothing on this. Okay, all right. Yeah, I do yeah. like the mm -hmm. story that they told about this when they originally released it. Mm -hmm. They were remodeling the Abelor Distillery. They broke through a wall. Oh, yeah. The yeah. workers broke through a wall and yeah. found a, an old antique bottle of Abelor. Mm -hmm. And by the time the distillery people showed up, the working guys had to drank half the bottle. Very funny. Uh, yeah, that's very funny. I can't, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> this was, if I remember correctly, and yeah. I may be attributing this to the wrong thing, but this is my memory of it. Mm -hmm. They, uh, this is their recreation of that original flavor profile. Okay. 59.8, yeah. 119.6 proof. So that's the, still 50, really hot for scotch. ABV, yeah. This one is batch 67. Mm. Yeah, there we go. Oh, see? So you still get that sulfury, sort of fainty funk note mm -hmm. from the sherry cask, right? I get But it's yeah. softened. The ethanol does present his nail polish a, a little bit. A little bit, but the flavors keep up with that, so it's not overwhelming and it doesn't ruin it. But I do want to acknowledge that, yeah, there's a little bit of that acetone type of note right yeah, in there. Yeah, it's a little sharper. I, I'm getting less dark fruit than what I was. Raisin. Okay. Or not plum. Actually, I would probably be sold on plum. Even more so. And then some vanilla in there. Yeah, it's really nice. That's beautiful. Oh, this has a magnificent wow. no, palate. Hold on. Any shortcomings I was finding on the nose? No. Completely gone on the tip. Yeah. This is magnificent. Oh. If McAllen tasted like this. I think if you had the taste of this with the nose of McAllen, you would probably have a damn near perfect scotch. Yeah, for sure. You can ask. Wow, it's really not. Did you see that? Yeah, it, it was the miniscus. Yeah. It just wasn't wow, giving Wow, that was really intense. It wasn't giving it up. It was Rick rolling us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, got a little more thin on the nose. Mm, yeah, it did, but it did also lose that slight, slight acetone nose. Oh, it ruined it. A little bit of a soapy quality. Yeah. If you add the water. Before we finish, you guys need to see what's been going on behind the scenes. Just now, what do we got? We've got a new doorway that's rec sized. Finally, <laughs> I fit. So just to give you guys some context, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing new entryway into the back room that's being remodeled. You super, super excited or a little super excited? excited? Super excited. Super, super excited, good man. This all tightened up, check this out. This freaking amazing booth. We're gonna get the benches. He made these by hand. So we can store paraphernalia, contraband, that are gonna go right there, right there. It basically feels like you're inside of a barrel, super cool, kind of like an old beat up ship type of deal. And then a little private nook, a little hangout nook. Yeah, so these 
by the Patreon names that got temporarily relocated. Very temporarily, guys, don't worry. Everybody that was on above that little mantle. Yeah. And it's amazing how many names I recognize pulling them down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Patrick Cohen was one. Hell yeah. Jason Sapp, John Gunsel. Wait, John's on there? John's on there. Maybe he's not so bad after all. <laughs> and we have the equipment. We just got our uh, 60 inch refrigerator. It's gonna go on this back wall. It's finally time for an upgrade past the Yeti. Are you sad to see it go or are you like finally a new? It's been <laughs> An epic send off? Uh, epic send -off. Viking funeral. Dude! Viking funeral, yes. Oh. We have gathered here today to pay tribute to a loyal servant. The Yeti Kula. A true warrior's journey to Valhalla requires the sacred staves. And we shall release its spirit with holy fire. If this ceremony is deemed worthy, it shall summon forth the Oaken Force. You mean the Odin Force? Oaken Force. Surely, Brother Isaac, this is a Viking funeral for the ages. It is. So, you know, I heard today there's a shipping delay. The ice bin won't be here till May. 